Welcome back, my WallTube family. It's Abraham here again, supervisor of South Coast Warden Academy, and I'm back, guys. I know you haven't seen me for a really, really long time. I've been really busy with the school, uh, New Year's and Christmas, the ladies. But guess what? I'm back. In today's uh, video, I'm going to touch on the subject on how do you know, on how do you know if you're running too hot or too cold, and I'm also going to show you on how I choose the right temperature to to weld TIG whenever I'm welding. Alright guys, the first thing I want to talk to you about is how do I choose uh, the temperature I want to weld at or the amps I want to weld at, you know. And uh, the first thing I look at whenever I'm choosing my temperature, uh, it's the uh, first, first thing you want to do uh, that I do is I look at what schedule I'm going to be welding at or in, and what size pipe I'm going to be welding. Uh, it's very, very simple. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. Uh, the bigger the pipe, the thicker the pipe, the hotter you need to run. Uh, the smaller the pipe, uh, the thinner the pipe, the colder you need to run, okay? Um, so for example, let's say I have a, have a six inch schedule 40, you know, I would probably cap that around 160 amps. My root, I'll probably throw that at 100 amps, okay? But let's say I have the same pipe and it's, a, it's another six inch, but it's a schedule 80, okay? Uh, right there, um, I would actually, I would run hotter, you know, it's because it's thicker. Schedule 40 versus Schedule 80, you know, it's much, there's a big difference there. Um, a, ske a schedule root on the Schedule uh, 6 inch Schedule 80 pipe, I'd probably do that like around 110. I'll go up 10 more on, on the root. On my fills and cap on Schedule uh, schedule 80 6 inch, I would probably uh, 180, 180, 180 amps, you know, versus a, a Schedule 40, I probably wouldn't go over 160, you know. Um, so things to look at whenever you're running too cold. Uh, what the portal is going to do, and I'm going to demonstrate this right here on this plate right here. Um, if you're running too cold, you're going to have a hard time spreading uh, your puddle uh, from wall to wall. It's not going to want to listen to you, um, and it's just not going to spread. You know, as you keep going, getting hotter and hotter, that puddle is going to start listening to you. It's going to start moving, moving the puddle. If you're welding properly, using the right technique. The port is going to move a lot faster, a lot smoother, and there's going to be a big difference, okay? Now, now, keep in mind, you want, keep in mind, just because uh, I'm welding colder does not mean that, uh, that the pipe is not getting hot, okay? Because let's say I'm welding uh, at 100 amps, you know, and I'm welding from point A to point B, uh, and that takes me like, 10 minutes to just, I'm just throwing some crazy numbers out there. From point A to point B at 100 amps, schedule 80 pipe I'm capping, from point A to point B, it takes me 10 minutes to get, 10 minutes to finish the beat, okay? Versus if I turn up my machine up to 180, and I go the same distance, point A to point B, uh, and it takes me, instead of 10 minutes, it takes me five minutes. I cut down on, uh, I cut down on the time I was welding on the pipe, and actually uh, that pipe does not heat up it heats up less than where I would be welding at 100 and uh, 100 amps. Um, but I'm about to demonstrate this right here. Uh, what I'm going to do right here, I am going to go from, I'm going to start right here from left to right. I'm going to start at 60, then I'm going to do increments of 20 amps each bead. I'm going to do a bead at 60 amps, show you how that looks. Then a bead at 80 amps, show you how that looks. A bead at uh, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, and then 220. Okay, and you're gonna, and I'm gonna show you what happens whenever how whenever you're running too cold, and what happens whenever you're running too hot. Okay, let's get it. All right, guys. So I'm gonna run my first bead right now. Um, I'm gonna be burning at uh, 60 amps. Uh, this is gonna be way too cold, um, but I, w I just want to show you how it looks. As you can see right now, I'm at 60 amps, and the rod doesn't even want to burn. My puddle doesn't want to listen to me nothing i can't even move at 60 amps okay i'm just doing this for uh to show you for viewing purposes so y'all can see what it looks like i'm way too cold right here okay i mean i mean anybody with common sense can figure this out anybody with common sense all right guys so i just finished doing my uh, uh beat at 60 amps as you can see man my rod didn't even want to melt uh <laughs> i wasn't going anywhere you know and 
Uh, that's how, pretty much how it feels like whenever you run into code. Your Proto doesn't uh, want to listen to and you're not going anywhere. Um, so right now I'm gonna start my second beat. Uh, I'm gonna start it at uh, 80 amps now. I went up 20. Uh, we're gonna see how that looks. I'm at 80 amps right now. And um, I'm able to actually swing my puddle uh, left to right. Um, but I'm having a hard time spreading it, which uh, I already knew I was going to because I am still way too cold. Keep in mind that uh, the base metal I'm welding on is a half inch plate, you know. My strides are really, really thin because uh, I mean, yeah, my strides are really, really close together. Uh, because I'm really, I'm running really, really uh, cold. Like I said, I've been, I've been under my hood for, I feel like a long time now, but I feel like I'm not covering any ground, and that's because I'm running way too cold. All right, guys, there you go. Um, my, uh, there go, here goes the beat at 60 amps and the beat at 80 amps. You know, you could tell the difference. At 60 amps, I was struggling to even, I, I couldn't even spread the puddle right here. And then the 80 amps over here, it took me a long time to get from here to there because I was running so cold, but I was able to spread the portal a little more uh, going side to side. Um, my strides are really, really close together, but that's because I had to do that in order to spread my puddle. You know, the colder you run, the closer your, your, your strides are, uh, your weaves are. Um, the hotter you run, the more farther apart your weaves will become, will be. All right, guys, again, here you go, uh, 80 amps, 60 amps, and I just turned up my machine uh, 20 more amps. I'm at 100 amps right now. Uh, let's see how that looks. Okay, 100 amps feels way light years, way better than 80 amps and 60 amps, you know. I'm burning hotter, so it's a lot easier to move my puddle. Now, I'm still struggling because <laughs> this is still very, very cold. Especially that the base metal I'm using uh, is half an inch plate. Uh, this would probably be equivalent or really close to uh, a six inch schedule 80 pipe. No, I'm just, uh, I'm really fighting to spread my puddle. Uh, my weaves are really, really tight and that's because I am cold, I'm running cold. Hey guys, I just finished uh, my beat at uh, 80 amps, at 100 amps actually, um, and I'm going to turn up my machine at 20 more amps to 120 amps. I'm going to see how that looks and how it runs. So I'm at 120 amps right now, and it's this is getting more to my liking. Uh, it's way easier to walk the cup. The puddle is flowing a lot more freely. And I'm moving faster. I'm covering more ground than before. Um, it's still pretty, pretty cold. But like I said, it feels a lot more, be a lot way. Uh, it feels a lot better. And again, guys, this is at 120 amps. All right, guys, turn the machine 20 more. I'm 140 amps. Let's burn some rod. Mm. I'm definitely moving a lot quicker than than when I was burning at 120 amps. Uh, I'm not really fighting my puddle anymore uh, to make it go to the side to the side I wanted to. But this isn't really the temperature I like running a schedule lady pipe. I, I normally like running at a uh, around 160 through 180 on my fills and probably capping at 180. All right guys, so this time, instead of going 20, I'm going 40 more amps, okay? So I went from 140 to 180 on this bead. See how it looks. My bead is a lot wider now. 
I'm able to swing or walk that cup just like I like it. My weeds are a lot uh, wider than before and that's because I'm running a lot hotter. Man, right now my bead is very, very wide. My puddle is very, very wide. <laughs> my uh, puddle feels very, very uh, watery. And that's because I'm running at 220. Um, I have to be careful now with undercut. Because the hotter you are, the more prone you are to getting undercut. Alright. So in order to... Once you're getting... Once you start getting above to the 200s, uh, you have to be kind of you have to be skillful, okay? Because that's when a uh, undercut undercutting starts to become an issue. Um, the more skill you are, the more heat you're able to tolerate. Uh, my brother, he's actually at this one job, and uh, <laughs> he says he goes through about. Uh, four tick torches a week because he burns really really hot but he's welding like 64 inch pipe all right guys so i'm going 40 more up again uh last beat was at 220 uh now i'm at 260 okay uh um hopefully i, I don't i don't slip while i'm walking the cup because keep in mind um the hotter the plate uh, the slipperier it is and the harder it is to walk your cup, okay? So you got to take uh, take note of that, okay? Oh, wow. Man, as soon as I stroke my arc, <laughs> I got some undercut, you know? This is definitely way too hot. I have to be really, really careful I don't get any undercut. Uh, like I said before, I just stroke my arc and it, my arc digged into the plate. Man, I'm just... This puddle is really, really watery. And you can even tell on the weaves, my weave pattern. This is way too hot. I do not like running at this temperature. Oh man, it's, it's getting slippery. slippery. Alright guys, um, this is going to be my final, final bead. Uh, I'm going to run it at 300 amps. Um, I haven't ran 300 amps in a long time. Uh, I hope I don't slip. Cause like I said, the hotter it is, the easier it is to slip. Uh, the hotter the base material, the slippery it is. Uh, so let's start this bead. Oh man, yeah, this is way too hot. I don't know if you could tell on the camera, but man, when I stroke my arc, it just wanted to freaking <laughs> undercut my puddle. It's just everywhere right now. This is this is not good. This is way too hot. Way too hot. I barely have any control of that puddle. My weeds are sloppy. Oh man, I almost slipped right there. Yeah, this is this is what you don't want to do. I'm gonna concentrate. Oh, right there, I slipped. Yeah, that's because it's too hot. All right, guys, um, I'm about to recap uh, on everything that I just did. Uh, I did a couple beads right here, uh, all at different temperatures. Uh, my first bead, I started at 60 amps. Uh, this one was at uh, 80 amps, 100 amps, 120 amps, 140 amps. And then I went and then I decided to uh, go up by 40s, increments of 40s. This one was at 180, then at 220, then at 260, and at 300 right here. As you can tell, <laughs> these two look they, look, they look sloppy, okay? These are very, very sloppy right here, especially this last one, which was at 300 amps, okay? Uh, right here, it was hard to control my puddle as I was walking the cup side to side. I did slip, slip like twice, and that's because uh, the base metal got too hot. Um, when your base metal gets too hot, uh, it's very, very slippery, okay? Right here, these two, this one was at, uh, I believe, at a... Uh, 220 and this one was at 180. This is my ideal range right here. Okay, uh, my puddles were it was fairly controllable. Um, this one especially at 180 amps. 
Uh, keep in mind that when you're running pipe over and over, you're doing beads over and over, that pipe is getting hotter and hotter as you as you weld and as you get to the cap, you know. And if you don't want to let it cool off, maybe running your cap at 220, like right here, is going to be way too hot because, again, that pipe is going to be too hot, you know. And I would, I would choose to run it at 180. But you can do it at 220, you know. As you go over here uh, at 120, it looks, it looks good. But like I said, it's <laughs> uh, my, the puddle wasn't spreading like I wanted to. And uh, this still, to me, it's too cold. Over here, from here on out, you know, this one was at 100. I uh, know, uh, yeah, 120, I believe, 100, 80, and 60, you know. Uh, I was definitely fighting the puddle over here. Uh, I was struggling to spread it. Um, I took forever, actually, to get to from, to, from point A to point B. It took me forever to get there. Um, so yeah, uh, whenever I am, um, whenever I'm choosing my, my temperature, the first thing you, I, I do is I, I see what schedule the pipe I'm going to be welding is. Okay, if it's a, a thick pipe, then you know obviously you want to run it hotter. Uh, for this example, schedule 16, schedule 80, uh, root would be at 100 and, um, 110, 115 amps, and a uh, filling cap probably I'll, I'll stick between a 180 to a 220. Uh, once maybe even 160 to 220 around that range right there you know you got to find your comfort zone uh, everybody was at different temperatures you know as long as you are getting the right reinforcement you're fusing on the walls uh, you're gonna be okay okay uh, just because you go to a job site and you see a welder welding at a uh, 300 amps uh, and you just started welding you're like oh man I want to run at 300 amps no no uh, it takes skill to run at those temperatures all right the higher your skill set uh, the more you're able to tolerate um, uh, like I said, um, also, uh, now just because, uh, you're running colder does not mean you're not inputting, uh, a lot of heat into that pipe. You know, you could be running at hundred amps and you're going all the way around that pipe. It takes you double the time to get to finish your weld. So you're inputting more heat, even though you're running colder. That's one thing, uh, to take into consideration. Um, what else? Uh, another thing, if you're not sure on, uh, where, uh, on the, if you're not sure how high you need to run or you need something to base uh, to see how hot you're gonna run, you can always look at your uh, WPS uh, and uh, it'll t tell you your ranges uh, that you need to stay stay at, you know, your parameters. Uh, some WPSs are backed by, I think, uh, what is it called? Um, impact testing, if a WPS has an impact testing, uh, you have to stay in those parameters. Now, if the WPS does not have in impact testing, uh, you can actually uh, weld at your discretion, um, and you can have just a CWI uh, modify it, you know, to your to the welder's liking. Um, but like I said, I hope this video helps you all out. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, um, or follow me and my own personal uh, Instagram at abwelds. Um, it's good to be back. See you until next time.